what you do have to share is your story. How did Jesus and Christ impact your life? How was the seed planted in you? That's what you have to share. And when you share that, you share the word of the Lord. You share this lessons that we've learned in scripture study, but it's also our lives lived out in that study, in that life together. The word will increase and will multiply. And more people will hear about Jesus Christ if we tell our stories. I don't believe in telling someone else's story. I don't believe in telling a formula. I believe in telling how Jesus Christ moved me. And that makes a difference. The other thing will be multiplied from King James comes from us, to, I mean from Acts comes to us from the King James verse is, is the churches will multiply. The churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria were edified, or that means to be built up in the Lord, to be strengthened, and walking in fear of the Lord and in comfort of the Holy Spirit were multiplied. Does it say they became great big churches? No, it says they multiplied. If it was one great big church, they all would have been at the church of Acts. Hey, the new super church at Acts. And it would just keep on expanding and expanding and expanding. Until what would happen? Boom. Instead, it multiplied throughout the region, throughout the countries, throughout the world. The churches multiplied. What God is calling us to is that kind of a multiplication. And there's good news when these things happen. Second Peter 1, 2 in the message says, Grace and peace to you many times over as you deepen your experience with God and Jesus our Master. When we do these things, when we live out the faith in Jesus Christ, when we start multiplying, the peace of Christ multiplies in us. All of a sudden, we're not alone in this world. Doesn't it feel good to come in this room and talk about Jesus? It's because everybody else is here too. Would you, have, would you feel the same way if I were sitting here and I was just talking to you, Ryan, for the, everyone else is gone? And I'm sitting here pointing at you all day. No, it's when we have that faith together. We have peace together. And as the people grow, we get this peace that God's got a plan, that God's got this thing. Just yesterday, I had a, one of those moments where, where God showed he had this thing. I was at a gas pump at BJ's. Good deal. Thank you, honey, for my card and membership, by the way. Um, and one of our church members was there. And he was there because he needed healing. And he knew that there was a guy there that was a faith healer. And I didn't know that. I drove up and parked and... Started to give him a hard time and about five minutes later we were praying over this individual and his healing. That's peace. Because he's dealing with a lot. And God came right in the middle of that and took that moment, that holy intervention moment, I think, and made a difference. And my peace was multiplied. And I know his peace was multiplied also. So when we're doing and we're living out our faith and we're believing and multiplying that through other people, life gets easier. I didn't say it was perfect, but it does get easier. I believe that with all my heart. And then when we go into these moments and we talk about going out and doing those things we come to that second passage that uh, April read for us this morning 2 Corinthians 9 he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness don't you know that while we were doing that yesterday while we were praying at BJ's gas pumps somebody probably saw us and that was a moment, that was a moment that God created and made happen. And God gives us the moment. He doesn't just send us out there and say, go make Christians. 
He supplies us just like He supplies us with the bread we eat and the love we feel. God supplies us with those opportunities to multiply. But we're not living it out. We're more interested in expanding than we are multiplying. We're more interested in making things work than bringing people to Jesus Christ. Here's, here's the, the deal. Listen. Jesus changed the world. Amen? Jesus had 12 guys. We have 350 in attendance every Sunday. Jesus changed the world. What are we doing? Jesus said, go. And we had to hear, here at the church say, well, we say, please stay or come back so we can all gather here and have a good time here together. Let's just stay here and be happy. But Jesus said, go. Multiply. Don't fester. <laughs> go and multiply. And that's what we're to do here. Is that we come here to get our marching orders. Because Jesus told us to go. The disciples changed lives and multiplied the ministry. If you doubt that for a second, take a little gander in any chapter in Acts and watch how the church just took off and multiplied all over the place. And what do we do? We count heads and worry about the offering. We got to change this equation. We got to be about Jesus Christ, not about First Church. We maybe don't need to be the biggest church in the world or even in the town. There's a blogger, the guy is R. Fong, is his blogger name. He wrote this. He's a Christian writing on a Christian blog. If I want to be one in a crowd of thousands, I'll go to a concert or a baseball game. If I want to share a moment of prayer, praise, and proclamation, about 300 to 500 max. But the really intimate moments happen when 12 or so gather to share the body and the blood. You see, our greatest asset is our relationships. And we don't get that like this. Do you know what he's thinking? Or vice versa? It's in those small groups is where our greatest asset is, is where we start growing and start multiplying and making things happen. And we started about two years ago creating community groups and Sunday schools to, with that purpose. But what have we done with it? We kind of put it up on the shelf and some people got... And I'm thankful for the community groups that are out there and making a difference. But it is a precious few of us. We need to be doing more of that small group or what John Wesley called cells in our church so that we can continue to multiply. We do better when we do it that way. That's what we're called to be. Here's, here's a question. What if we were happy instead of being a mega church, making our goal to be a mega church? What, would, what if we were happy with being a church of... 500 in attendance, like the blogger said, three to 500. And then realized that's where we needed to be and there were other things to do. That'd be okay, wouldn't it? Hello? Yeah, yeah, we don't have to be the biggest and the best. We have to be Christ's. Slaughter says of churches, if you are not reaching the lost and freeing the least, you are dead. And if we're dead, it's because we're not reaching the least and the lost. We're not doing what we were created to do. How many people like Ritter's ice cream? What if you went to Ritter's and they said, oh, we're not selling ice cream anymore? How long would Ritter's last? Great hot dogs, but I don't think it's going to work, right? That's what we're doing as a church. We're claiming our mission 
is to make disciples for the transformation of the world. Make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Is the ice cream gone? It's time for us to serve up Christ like we're called to do. Growth comes by multiplying disciples, not necessarily by multiplying buildings and institutions. Slaughter says this, the church, ever striving to reach and to serve more people, must meet people where they are and tailor each new community to the people it seeks to serve. That means we have to go and figure out what they need. That means instead of trying to make this place bigger, we might need to do something like go down to Holly Hill and start Derbyshire Place. Now when that started a year ago, a year ago, it'll be July, it'll be a year, but when we started working on that, there was a lot of ruckus about that. The idea that we were doing ministry somewhere else when we hadn't even met all of our goals here, our goals. We hadn't met our budget, and we hadn't met, we hadn't, we hadn't. But God called us clearly to this place. And what happened is, we're, we started multiplying the work that we do with others, and new people are getting involved. And it, it's not going to affect, it's not going to change the number of people that come here. But it is going to change the kingdom. So those are the kinds of things we need to be doing. We have to be risk takers. We have to be people that step out in faith. Because we're building our faith and multiplying our faith in the kingdom. The biblical model of the church follows the multiplication equation, not the expansion equation. And, and I hope that we learn that as we go along. And listen to how great the multiplication process is. Listen to what can happen. This is a, a sermon illustration that I found and I thought it was beautiful so I thought I'd share it. Making Christ, Jesus Christ, the transformation of the world is what we're going to multiply, right? Listen to this. The Power of Mul Multiplication by June Tadera, who is a missionary and evangelist. On the wall of the Museum of Natural Science in Chicago, there is a checkerboard with 64 squares. In the lower left-hand corner is a grain of wheat. The display includes this question. If you doubled the amount of wheat as you move from square to square, how much would you have when you reach the 64th square? A car load? A train load? You would have enough wheat to cover the country of India six feet deep. That is the power of multiplication. If we, suppose you go out and reach one person for Jesus, stick with that one person for six months, help and encourage and strengthen them. At the end of six months, there are only two. At the end of the year, there are four of you. And at the end of 18 months, there are eight. Two years, 16. Do you know how many people there would be at the end of 17 years? More than the population of the world. There would be six billion people. Do you think this multiplication thing might work? But it takes us, brothers and sisters. It takes us to take the good news of Jesus Christ and go. Hear the words from 2 Timothy 2, the second verse. And what you've heard from me through many witnesses, and trust to the faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. What Jesus gave us we're to multiply. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.